for joining us for our latest episode of Careers and Conversations. We have a very important discussion today on women and leadership, specifically in IT. We have a great lineup of panelists today. The first is Simona Rowlandson, who is the Chief Technology Officer at ISACA. We also have Patty Schmida, who is the CIO and VP at LK Manufacturing. And finally, we have Matthew Salas, who is the founder of MS Business Solutions. We're so excited to have you here today and we hope you enjoy the discussion. So I'm Simona Rawlinson. I am the Chief Technology Officer for ISACA. ISACA is a global association. We have over 150,000 members worldwide as well as uh, over 200 chapters worldwide. My early career, I was a, a Java and C++ programmer. And then uh, the rest is history. At one point, you know, it's like declaring a major in college, I decided to go on the management track and uh, I was a director of engineering and then I was a president of a software company, a hundred million dollar software company, which I left uh, after 17 years, became the uh, CIO of the second most populous county in the United States, was there for a while, five years, and then uh, went into construction. I was a CIO of a um, $3 billion construction company, and now I uh, am with ISACA. So it's a, it's an eclectic road, and uh, I've enjoyed every step of the way. And Patty, how about you? When I went to college, I um, worked for a technology center and learned what a computer was and learned, and it was quite a while ago, so typewriters were still a thing. But I am um, glad I did that because as I went to school and I worked, I tried to figure out what I wanted to do. And I ended up with an economics degree, which I think was very well rounded for a business leader. And that's really what I determined is I really just wanted to be a leader and help make change and improvement into an organization. So it took me on the path to where I am today started my first CIO job with AM Castle, and that was a also a manufacturing distribution company. And I just took the um, IT opportunities as they came and came up through the infrastructure ranks. And then I had uh, the stars aligning and it said, take a CIO job uh, as the uh, previous CIO was leaving the business. And our CEO at the time really took me under his wing and helped me get the confidence and, and get the leadership executive skills that I needed to be in a leadership role at the executive level. So I was the first uh, woman vice president for the company and that was a 120 year old company at the time. Stayed there for about 12 years and then recruited to LK where I am currently and continued my CIO journey and leadership journey. And Matthew, we'd love to hear about you. I started off as a developer in the old technologies that we don't uh, hear of anymore. Um, so started off as a developer, moved up in the leadership role. And I realized that I had a lot more to offer uh, in various industries and wanted to didn't want to be boxed into a specific role and started to do started my own consulting business. Whatever role I take, I focus on continuous improvement. And that is very much also focused on women and diversity within teams. And so when you look, focus on innovation and continuous improvement, it's really hard to drive and make value in those roles, uh, realize value when the teams are so one-sided or does not have the perspective of a diverse team. So today I have gone back to consulting and I'm an executive uh, consultant for organizations. I want to really talk about um, the elephant in the room right now, which is the year 2020. Uh, it's been it's studied actually that this pandemic has erased potentially decades of progress that women have made in uh, not just leadership, but in the workforce. It's erased decades. I want to talk a little bit about how we may be able to turn that around. Uh, because per Matthew's comment and everything that you guys have seen and that we all know, diversity, not just um, race, but gender makes teams stronger. And so how are you guys envisioning um, bringing women back, giving them the confidence to come back, giving them the support to come back? I want to give this question to Simona to start with. Uh, are you seeing this exodus and, and how do you think this may be able to uh, be turned around? I am seeing the exodus and it's very disheartening. Um, 
even in my own organization, uh, you know, there is a lot of support for employees, but it's it's hard, you know. I, I often say if, if a person has two children, you know, if you have three jobs, right, they're at home, especially uh, younger children, you know, they need help with studying and education and everything. And it's, um, so I'm seeing it. And um, again, uh, it has to be a deliberate effort. It starts with all of us. It starts right now at the point we are if we don't sponsor or support women uh, in the workforce and create um, an ability for them to have truly work-life balance they they joke that we are not like working from home anymore we are living from work we all fail so again it's incumbent upon all of us to support women to sponsor women to advocate for women and I think uh, it needs to start with boards. Um, the more women, in, um, the more women are on boards of directors, the more women are in senior leadership roles. The more we need to advocate to um, make sure that women are in the workforce. Thank you, Simona. Uh, I want to give you sort of a variation of the same question, Patty. Uh, you have a somewhat different work-life balance that, uh, than maybe the rest of us. And I want to talk a little bit about that and, and how other women may be able to be supported in the programs that, that you've started, uh, like the mentorship groups, et cetera. I do. I am in a different stage in my career, in my life, I suppose, with older children and not dependent on me. I also am fortunate to have a stay-at-home husband who has been able to take care of all of the personal things that are going on so that I could focus on the opportunities at LK, uh, specifically with women in leadership. And being a manufacturing company, it's far and few between that we see uh, women, let alone other diversity at the upper ranks. So how do I support that? Uh, The women's group that I had started about seven years ago at LK are made up of senior women. They're usually in a senior manager, director, senior director, and vice president role. And my whole goal there was to give confidence and to share empathy uh, around the situations that they may be faced with. Uh, That certainly proved out this year, which has been a year of uncertainty, a year of unknown, causing other stressors that women with younger families, with different management or leaders within their verticals that they report into, it's really in there to let them unload, to let them get it off their chest, to let them vent and then give ideas and suggestions to basically lose control. It's okay not to know, it's okay not to uh, be certain what's going to happen with the economy or the business as as they read news and watched news that businesses were going under or big layoffs and things like that. So to kind of remove the things that you can't control, what you can control, move on with that. So really a whole year of practicing with these women, uh, specifically in leadership, that says, let's lean on each other, let's use the platform and It also gives me the opportunity to share with my peer group who are all men on the executive team and let them know that we need to have some empathy and we need to be flexible and and really just taking the stage for all of that, representing the women within our organization. 